What up, fam? Welcome to the Double Secret Exclusive Podcast with my man, Eric Godzi. That's me. That's you. Yeah. If you haven't listened to the Not Secret Podcast we did, definitely check that out. That was dope. We talked about the hero's journey. That's another analogy, another way to look at your life. And yeah. I think this was a different way to approach it and something that I've been mulling over for a long time because I was a huge fan of role-playing games growing Same. up. Same. And really what was happening there, I think, is you're able to project yourself into a character. So like your avatar, sometimes you get to create it or sometimes it's out of the box. There were some games where you could like build your stats from the start. There's a game called Wizardry, which had like no graphics, (laughs) no anything, but it was so dope because you had this random lottery of points you could assign and you could be like a samurai or a thief or a wizard or all these spells and stuff. But it allows you to project yourself into this avatar Mm. and then have reliable, tangible, improvement scores that you could get so you get the thrill of getting better which i think is something that we like innately feel addicted to growth yeah we're addicted to growth like that's what we're here for i think we know at a soul level like we're here to learn we're here to grow we're here to improve and with a video game you get fucking stats (laughs) you get weapons you get dope shirts and armor yeah you had to fight dragons you could equip stuff you make friends you save people i mean i think about it now the games are so good now like we were final fantasy players right amen amen dragon warrior do you ever get down with yes, some dragon yes. warrior fuck i love those games imagine if they were as good as world of warcraft is now i would not have a job i'd not be employed thank god i i, like, I got out just in time seriously like i watched my brother get into world of warcraft and he fucking crushed it in world yeah. of warcraft but it was so consuming because he's got actual real friends <laughs> who really think Did. he's actually Did. cool yeah for what he's doing in the game like that's a mind fuck yeah like that he's that's even another layer but regardless like it's that reliable growth you know whereas in real life it's hard man because you spiral you're up and down you don't reach level 10 and then the next level is level 12 sometimes you're at level 10 and it's like oh sorry bitch back to level two yeah like, and you don't know shit and the frame of reference for what growth is is uh dynamic like your own system for what might be growth can change and, and like that's like an existential crisis where the way that you rate your level vanishes and then people yeah. fall into abysses. But with Final Fantasy, if I, if I slay that dragon, I'm going from 13 to 14. Exactly. Every time. And you're accumulating gold pieces. Right. And you're like, and the gold pieces don't go away. You don't have car payments. <laughs> right. you know? You're only buying weapons. <laughs> taxes. There's, there's no taxes there's no in taxes. any <laughs> role-playing game because I would fucking, no. you would turn that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> if just as you slept you got less money 40 <laughs> percent taken away from every dragon slaughter that would be the worst yeah bad idea for no. any game makers to do that no. but that's life so it, yeah. it provides this like finite set of rules and things that allow you to progress mm. i also think it's kind of one of the benefits of a traditional martial art is that yeah you know you can belt up and so you get like actual almost like titles or levels or or scores symbolic progression symbolic progression we need yeah and we are direly absent of so i wanted to try and like apply that to apply that to life and it's but it because it really works the same way except just you just don't have that external validation and it was i was so obsessed with the improvement of characters (laughs) same man (laughs) like there's the one the most ridiculous one was this game called quest for glory it was a pc game and I fucking loved that game. Mm. It was like set in like um, fucking ancient Persia or something like that. And they had like genies. And yeah. and I was like, you could choose your guild as like warrior or paladin or thief. I was always thieves guild. <laughs> <laughs> I just like expressing my shadow side right? of like. And, Since the early days. And they had like a bunch of different characteristics. Like throwing was one of the characteristics. So the thief, for a thief who wasn't particularly strong, like if I could throw daggers really well, I could fuck up desert for creatures sure. like from afar and they <laughs> yeah. couldn't hit me and so i'd literally just pick rocks up type in like pick rock pick up rocks and then throw the rocks at nothing in the mm-hmm. desert until my stamina dropped and then i would steal food and then sleep and build it up and throw more rocks yeah i would spend hours throwing rocks just to get that one point from like 10 to 11 to 12 and you could get up to like 99 yeah. i think in throwing and by that time you were just a fucking savage like For some sure. monster comes across the stream well bam dude it's so what they call it is grinding and like i was the same way like as soon as i got to the point where the tutorial of the game would like let me train i would just grind for fucking like eight to ten hours and so i find that the way you play a video game actually like reflects how you approach life and what i found 
especially when I was young, is I was so averse to challenge that I would train and train and train until it became easy, and then I'd stop playing the game. Yeah, I would train yeah, yeah, so yeah. much where it would become easy, and then I'd stop playing it. Yeah, and like I did that for years until I recognized what I was doing. What I was doing was avoiding challenge, and then I would still grind a little bit so I could get that like dope sword, but then I'd go and actually fight the bosses and it'd be challenging. Right, I mean, I sometimes, so I would test it early, you know, but I was almost disappointed when like I barely squeaked by, you know? Right. Like I wanted to be badass. Oh yeah, just right? fucking dominate because <laughs> like, like, you put all those hours yeah, in. Yeah, because the game was also so enjoyable to play too and to yeah. win it was always a letdown mm -hmm. to a certain degree. It was like, you, you won, but it was like there's that period of disappointment. You're I like, cried in my childhood after <laughs> I beat some Final Fantasy games. I'm talking, I have trauma and, and I'm about to share some <laughs> trauma with you. I think I was 14 and I beat Kingdom Hearts. Uh -huh. And back in the day before YouTube, like when you beat a game, you got the cutscene at the end, which was uh -huh. like the ultimate gift That's of- That's the payoff. My fucking grandmother was downstairs and was yelling for the whole family to come into the kitchen and she bitched us out about someone not refilling the ice cubes and I missed the cutscene to the game oh, no. and, I, and I cried. <laughs> I was a 14 year old boy crying in my oh, kitchen no. at my grandmother and then I go rebeat the boss but it you know. Yeah it's not quite the same. I got through that, it no. That first I was just time. bitter the whole time. <laughs> Because you already knew you could do it, right? You know? I just had to re fight the boss for it, and in all those games, the boss transforms into like just gets uglier and larger as you beat the versions, or at least that happened in the Final Fantasy games. Mm -hmm. And in the Dragon Warrior games, in particular, like Gold Piece, they did a good job with weapon escalation. Mm -hmm. So I would just be walking around for that random algorithm that would show me Gold Man, right? Okay, who was like not that hard to beat, but when you beat him you got mad gold or there was like a platinum slime i think it was right and like the platinum slime was super skittish Had the best rewards it would always run away you get mad experience points if you beat platinum slime but like most of the time you had to kill it in one strike because it would run away from you and you're like you move fucking, fucking hated fucking those run, yeah. <laughs> run away from me don't run away from me but if you there's beat a metaphor it, somewhere for life yeah all, and all of that but then how do we actually make it a metaphor for life and that's going to be the theme of this podcast and it's also, you know, a spoken word that I talked about, like applying this analogy, because I think it's something that we innately can understand. And if we can use that to like put some kind of framework together for life, yeah. I think it can be helpful. And I think like from a psychological point of view, the things we create are actually reflections of how our minds already operate. And so the creation of role playing games, I think, emerges out of the fact that our psychology has evolved to see life as a hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And we've manifested that in role-playing games. Mm -hmm. And so it's the perfect metaphor because it's the one that we've already created unconsciously to represent life already. Yep. Yeah, it reflects the truth that already exists. Like what Jordan Peterson would talk about, like a good story. Yeah, Like a good story doesn't tell a new story. It reflects the true story that already exists. Exactly. You know, something that we innately know like, oh, that makes sense. You put in work, you improve. Mm -hmm. You know, you get ready for this you challenge yourself you defeat it if you're not ready you die you die that ego death and you come back again you know mm -hmm. in the video game it's like an actual death and you get whatever resurrection right <laughs> thing that kind of and comes you just lose that. that's where the tax happened at least in final fantasy if you die that's when you lost like 20 percent of your gold it was the worst so i guess yeah, we die yeah, daily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> each, each paycheck we just die a little bit mm -hmm. and also the making friends and allies too yeah. especially like the more choices you could get mm -hmm. like that was always cool like do you want this person to join your party right and you're like oh fuck i don't know are they cool or are they not cool <laughs> are they really gonna help me do i yeah. need that shit yeah and choosing your character yeah, dude. Too, like, are you going to be a wizard? Well, the spells are dope, but then if you have to go hand to hand combat, Get hit once you're dead, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I I would try in the game wizardry too. You could switch characters too, but you would lose all your skills, but you'd keep the spells. So like, if you started, if you started as a wizard or a white mage or black mage or a wizard, could do both, right? And you could learn the spells and then switch to warrior class, but you'd have to build your way back up. Interesting. That's like, almost like seeking mastery in one domain and you switch and you kind of learn the essential skills, but you got to start over. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And so you could get these amalgamation characters that were like super badass. We're the most badass and that's an insight to life. Like, it, yeah. you know, it's, it's something that Robert Greene talks about in mastery. It's like, if you really want to find your way, get really good at a couple of things and then keep switching and then you come to a new thing where that class has not ever been made mm -hmm. like you're the copywriter and the psychologist and the podcaster that's me projecting you know like and you create yep. a new 
category. Yeah, and in wizardry, it would be you would be the samurai appearing with samurai weapons and samurai armor and whatever. Mm -hmm. But you could also heal the rest of your party because right. you picked up those white mage spells and yeah. be like, you could did, also cast a fucking fireball or whatever you needed to do. Did you play Final Fantasy Tactics? It was it was a lot like that, uh -uh. And, and you could like pick a class, grind and get skills, pick a new class, and make these god characters that like had combinations that no other type of character had, like a samurai who can heal. Fucking shit, badass. Up. Yeah, and I think that's I've really used that in my own life, right? I mean, this is what on it's been about this is why i can write a book like own the days because i keep switching and learning yeah from different particular oh plant medicine skill set all right let's go down that rabbit hole till i acquire the essential skills for that oh physical fitness skill set okay oh biohacking skill set okay oh, writing skill set okay and then you add all these things together and you get to be a really versatile for sure individual human yeah. yeah and then the combination what robert green and mastery calls the da vinci effect like being able to harness all of those skills creating the authentic expression yeah. of yourself badass all right so let's go it i got 10 quests 10 quests if your game if your life was a video game and each quest has a boss battle and each quest has a weapon that you need to use because mm -hmm. each boss has a weak a weakness and you would exactly. go search and try to find the weapon exactly. that would work for that boss yeah. yep quest number one forge your machine <clears throat> so this is really that idea of grinding like how do you get your physical body in a state where you can utilize that thing that we have this avatar that we have that our consciousness can express through and do things how do we get that thing in order yeah like that i think is like the first quest for any human like we got to be able to at least get the minimum viable amount of stuff done mm -hmm. with this body and it's a level level one that so many people have failed to even make it past level one yeah you know if if your body's not able to run to have sex to play without gassing out to like move in in this world yeah that we have you're not you're not playing the game of life to anywhere near its capacity if you can't even attempt to get up on a surfboard and feel what that feels like yeah you know if you can't attempt to if you can't make it up a mountain to feel what it feels like when you're at the top of bear mountain in sedona or the some of these things and you're soaking in the if you can't make it to that level you're not playing the game of life yeah fully at that point you know and sure there's some people who are going to have innate disabilities and challenges right. that are going to prevent them but for most of us it's just a choice it's mm -hmm. just the discipline and a lot of times the boss battle for that are like excuses yeah and rationalizations like these things that we tell ourselves of why we can't right and I, and I think to add to that the quality of your consciousness like how you feel like all the work you do with your mind the thing that is filtering that quality is the health of your body mm -hmm. and so like even if you are disabled like the way you eat and the way that you like walk or play can influence the quality of the thoughts that you have 100%. so you know it's it's not just the hiking it's like how do you eat when do you eat you know like it's using the body in its complete facet mm -hmm. as a way to learn and as a way to actually provide support i think it's daniele bellelli says you know when the body is a wild wolf when the mind is in, in doubt the body can provide tangible proof right so if you feel like a wild human like yeah. the primate that we're destined to be when your mind gets all squirrely and you're like oh who am i whatever and then you go fucking it's rip wild, a yeah. yeah rip a huge kettlebell workout and you're like well at the bare minimum i know i'm a fucking savage monkey <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? for sure <laughs> and like so you have some like footing to yeah. stand on like okay well at least i know what this thing is that i'm made of yeah and that can help provide that like baseline so and really the weapon that i chose for this is that skill i talk about a lot in the book and that's really an extreme version of choice because it's not that most of us don't know what we need to do i mean sure there's been some bad advice like eat a bunch of whole grains and stay away from fat like that's bad advice so you need better information but for the most part we know what we need to do we know we need to move we know we need to get fresh air we know we need to unplug from our phone we know we need to you know work out we know we need to do these things but we don't right and so what i call mental override is that version of choice where you just say no i'm gonna do this today yeah and yeah. it's a, it's a fucking cheat code man like 
there's whole books written about it that I think you could write a book that's better, but that's a different topic for a different time. <laughs> but like <clears throat> most of us, especially if we aren't taught this, our default, and I don't know when we got this because it's not an evolutionarily advantageous way to be, but the moment we feel discomfort, our default is to move away or to stop doing the thing that triggered the discomfort. Like what mental override is teaching you to do is the moment you feel that, that's when you have the opportunity to train that part of your mind and you, your whole fucking life is on the other side of that feeling. Yep. And I think with a video game, like you know that you get a payout from defeating the monster. Yeah. But like, it's like, so when you're in that shower and you're thinking about turning that shower nozzle cold, and if you've read Own the Day, you know, you know the benefits of that, benefits to cortisol, longevity, inflammation, mental state, you know, all these things that you get. You know it's good. You know it's good. But if there was like literally like if we we're imagining we're in fucking social media world and like all the points and likes and it was like gamified if you mm. know as soon as you turned it like you, you started hearing the points click like here comes mental override points plus yeah, you know your willpower goes up fractionally from yeah. you know one point every time you do that and your physical health goes up and your strength and longevity and all of these points you see them like ticking up if yeah. there was if we were able to like gamify that through like robocop classes everybody would be like damn right i know man. damn right it's it's wild to think about like i've not ever thought about it that way but that makes it so clear that if we had the proper psychological reinforcement like that's a no fucking brainer it's a no-brainer every day mm -hmm. you're like oh i'm i can get points and it's gonna be lasting willpower points yeah for doing this okay cool and it, it's exactly how it works because practice makes the master no matter what you're doing so the more you practice overcoming those feelings yeah. of comfort and shrinking from it the better you get it so what joe rogan calls conquering your inner bitch right like the more he conquers his inner bitch the bigger bitches he can conquer mm -hmm. like the more weakness internally that he can overcome you know and and the more he's able to do that the next time and the easier it becomes to do it because you reliably build yeah. that trait and plus get the benefits to strength and physical mm -hmm. performance and all the other things that you'd want and it's counterintuitive but like the moment you start living a life where when you feel that discomfort, you move beyond it, you actually enter a realm of life that's way less crowded, but the rewards are way higher than before that stage of life because so many people don't ever get to that point. Mm -hmm. So it's actually less competitive there for like the resources, but there's way more resources there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's counterintuitive, but if you can get beyond that mental feeling of i'm uncomfortable and then you do it anyways like abundance just starts fucking yeah. flowing in a way that feels almost unfair yeah i just keep getting this image of like the available resources being like an inverted pyramid and the difficulty being a regular pyramid and they're overlapped right and so like the higher you go up the difficulty ladder you know the deeper you go into the fat part of the abundance yeah. pyramid. and yeah. it's it's because the type of person you have to be to get to that point is so rare that there's just so it's there's no predators there like it's no. like and yeah, also like about. If you follow the other things of like collecting the allies you mm -hmm. know to use that and collecting the allies like once you've done that once you're that type of person and you've collected the allies because you got to remember like in your if you're building your war party for life right your your allies are going to want you to be a badass too for sure right so if yeah. you want a really kick-ass like mage you know in real life this is everybody's their own their own character everyone's so, the protagonist yeah, yeah. they're only going to join you it's not just whether you want them to join you no matter who you are it's bilateral yeah. it's like actually like world of warcraft like are you going to join this fucking dragon raid that we do well what are your skills who right. are you what level what are do you, you bring what do yeah. you bring to the table and so you get yourself to that level then you start accumulating allies and then at that point you have so many fucking options yeah you know like here where i stand one of the things that as stressed out as i get you know and worried about whatever macro event might be happening with honor or whatever i know that well fuck i've built a team of allies that we could pivot this yeah and you know as long as i stay in integrity and continue being the type of person that they would want in their fucking war party right we could pivot this and say all right maybe this on it dragon you know slayed us for some reason it didn't work well all right what's the next dragon mm -hmm. you know we got myself as the skills and the team able to do that but that yeah. starts with bringing yourself up to that level where you're valuable and 
you know, like it, it goes back to World of Warcraft. Like you start beating up like swamp rats, you know, like that's oh, yeah. where you start. And that feels like it's the hardest thing that you've done in the game so far. But as soon as you get to a level where you start having a bunch of like hero allies, you're only fighting dragons. Totally. You know, and it's, it, it kind of sucks, but it's like the people who are having the hardest time are the people who are still at the very beginning. Mm. And like the quests get harder, but your capabilities and like the resources you have just bloom and blossom. And the rewards get bigger. Yeah. The whole analogy holds. I forget which one of the games, one of the games you like literally start out with no money and no equipment and no anything. And so you like, you were fist fighting the monsters. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, one of the games, like you go out, literally you're, you're attacking them with nothing. And then you could like, maybe have to get like a wooden sword. It was right. like some crate or like just regular iron sword. You know, which is like the fucking lowest fucking thing. Always the shittiest the weapon shittiest is an thing. iron sword. Yeah. yeah, and it's like the bare minimum. But as soon as you got go from fist fighting <laughs> slimes or whatever, basic ass yeah. creature <laughs> that you had to get, and you got it like the basicest ass weapon and like leather armor and an yeah. iron sword. And you're like, all right, well, I'm on the path now. <laughs> you know, and eventually yeah. it's like sword of ice and fire. Exactly, <laughs> you know, like just, fucking Excalibur <laughs> yeah. or Exodius or yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, Um All right, so forge your machine. Like- that's fucking level one. Turn the shower nozzle cord Turn. cold every day. Yeah. Get those points. Feel the points tabulating every, yeah. every workout you do. Even though you might lose some of it, this is the attrition thing because that's the thing about a video game that's really appealing mm -hmm. is there's no attrition. Right. Like you reach right. a certain level of strength, you go to sleep, you don't play the game for two weeks, you're still just as strong. In that's life, point. you know, there is an attrition and I think that can be frustrating, but the truth of the matter is once you've been in shape it's way easier to get right. in shape like i could quit doing it like i'll go to peru i'll lose 10 pounds of muscle in peru i always do damn and i don't have 10 so, pounds to lose fuck. right so <laughs> i'll come back and i'll be 10 pounds lighter mm -hmm. but what took what the amount of time and effort it took me to get to where i am from nothing from yeah. scratch it was a long time but to get back to where i was it's way shorter it's like how a basketball player or somebody can have like a catastrophic injury mm -hmm. and then come back and still be in the nba like yeah. you always like, like the well they haven't remembers. been able to, they've, they've been out with a fucking knee and achilles thing for nine months and then they just made it back and they're still yeah. in the nba you know how because the body remembers your belief exactly harnesses that ability to remember so don't even worry about the attrition like once you've got there that's the new level that you know that you can get to and your body will adapt and get back there way quicker and then the gains of improvement from there will be smaller and yeah. more marginal and the key is like the cheat code to life is momentum mm -hmm. like as soon as you can build a habit that is positive and then you put momentum behind it like you i and this is something that you don't see in games but you do see in real life is there's exponential returns like if you get a habit right and you're doing it every day for years like where you are it's it's not a linear progression mm -hmm. it starts to fucking spike yep and may and you may go wandering downward for a while you know <laughs> like sure. you got to be ready for that yeah. too but know that as whatever level you've reached it's always going to be way easier to get back there even yeah. if you fall so just let that be some like comfort to battle against this force of attrition which may make you feel hopeless yeah. which is what we were talking about earlier like yeah you're not hopeless no matter where you've gotten you can get back there hopeless is a choice that you made yeah you know? true truth and so the key boss to pay attention to for quest one is excuses excuses fucking excuses yeah it's your own self-limiting patterns that go in your head yep slay that thing slay that dragon quest two find the present moment and uh, this is something that I think most of us are striving to live more in the present yeah. moment. But at the very minimum, know that it's there. You got to fucking find it. Yeah. And you got to feel it. And I'm, I envision the bosses in this quest like Bebop and Rocksteady, you know, <laughs> like two fucking, two big badasses that are not that hard to defeat, but you got to be mindful of them. And that's living in the past and mm -hmm. living in the future. And what video game was that from? Was that the uh, uh, Teenage uh, Mutant yes. Ninja Turtles? Yeah. 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 And that was, did you ever play the arcade? Team yes, Ninja only Pro? actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, only. Yeah. Which it was, was like your, a boar and then what was the other one? A boar and. It was like a boar, a boar hybrid and a dog hybrid, I think. It was something like that. but Like a pit bull and yeah. a pit bull and a boar or something yeah. like that. I just remember the shark, one having a, the. Uh, 
nose yeah <laughs> some fucking tmnt super fans <laughs> are gonna be like you fucking idiot you fucked Talking it up about yeah, video games all the youtube shit comments off. God damn shit off. um yeah so it's so easy for us to live in the past be thinking about what we could have could have done yeah. should have done ruminating punishing ourselves for everything that's happened before lamenting all of our personal history and these stories and all the reasons why you know which is basically just again excuses as to why we are where we are yeah. and just living in that past moment or the other one the rock steady is to project in the future like oh well i'll just you know i'll be happy later let me just get to this point and just not actually living ever in the present always thinking about the next thing that's the curse of the type a's yeah is always the future you know yeah. and then and a a thing that's worth offering is that if your past acts in a way where it intrudes on your consciousness w without you choosing it from a cognitive psychology standpoint what your brain is telling you is something has happened to you in the past that you haven't extracted out the mode of behavior that if it happened again you would know how to act in a more correct way mm. and so you can you can do clinically supported practices to deal with that shit. so if you find that you know bebop just keeps coming up and he's intruding on your consciousness without you calling him up that is your mind beckoning you to revisit this to extract out a new mode of behavior and you can do that through journaling is a really basic yeah. way like make it a story and then talk about what you would do differently if it arose again learn the lesson forgive it and move the fuck on amen like it's not going to do you any more benefit to keep punishing yourself no. or to keep living and reliving what is the lesson of that learn the lesson did you learn the lesson okay let it go it's yeah. done you cannot change it there's no fucking time machine where you can go back and redo what happened it, right. it is real it happened the only thing you can do is learn and forgive mm -hmm. and move on i think that's a really important important thing to remember yeah and then with the future stuff understand that the future isn't actually real ever ever it's not it's not even a real thing mm -hmm. there's only the present as it moves forward right like and in the future you'll either be still in the future or in the present <laughs> right you know yeah. like there's only the present yeah either it be in the illusion of the future or be in the present yeah, yeah exactly You're like well the future well in the future are you going to be in the present you know so you're your right present now. self will always be yeah, your present yeah. self is the future of your past yeah. self it's 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 always there and if you unless you're living in that you're not living yeah. you're projecting yourself into an alternate reality that isn't actually here and now and that's not living that's no. like and you do that to the end of your life and you go back and you're like i made it to death right what that when last did I moment live? will be hell yeah, yeah like fuck i fucking forgot to live whoops i was working towards something yeah. the whole time and living in this world where i didn't care about the now because the future was more important and you touched on this but the top five regrets of the of people dying on their deathbed the number one regret was mainly men saying that they worked too much mm -hmm. that's people being focused on the future too much yep when they're when their loved ones like the people that they claim to be working for are there in the present yeah and you see this in other silly ways too like i <laughs> i know <laughs> i don't know if i want to put them on blast but like i, this I know a someone secret podcast secret. drop it like it's hot <laughs> well i even see my fucking family making this mistake with their house right like they have this amazing house but it's perpetually under construction yeah. it's been perpetually under construction for the last fucking 10 years right so they're in this real sweet spot where they've made it they're successful and they have the opportunity to live in whatever house possible but in the present they have fucking workers and noise yeah. and shit going on in their house so for 10 years no matter how <laughs> dope the house gets in the future yeah, they've given up 10 years of building it and having the fucking annoyance of their house <laughs> being built the whole time yeah which has diminished the present value it's to such, such a, a degree. beautiful life yeah. metaphor yeah like, exactly and it's, it's that's what people do like retirement that's when you're gonna be happy okay so you're gonna miss the vigor and prime of your vitality till you're 60 and that's when you're gonna fucking be like woohoo right and what research finds is that people who quote unquote retire that's when you fucking start getting sick and dying because you don't have that 
that meaning or that purpose for why you're living. Yeah. And so like there's this weird psychological twist that we do where most of us, or at least I feel like this is dying now with my generation, but like my parents and everyone I know, their parents, let's sacrifice all my joy, all my love to just get to 55 or 60 and then retire. But then what happens when they retire is they don't have a reason for living, you know? So it's like, let's just go on vacations. Let's just chill. And what research shows is that people's health decline so rapidly mm -hmm. when they retire. Yeah, because they don't know, they haven't known themselves outside of working for something. Right, outside of the sacrifice. Outside of the sacrifice. Yeah. So they find some other thing to sacrifice or they'll just fucking exit the game like ah, game's over yeah you know let's hit the reset button do it again and it doesn't make sense so just understanding that there's no house that you're building that's so important that when it's done it's going to make everything like you have to enjoy the process as much as possible like yeah. don't sacrifice 20 years for the for some other amount of time because that 20 years is precious find the balance where you can be sacrificing and enjoying simultaneously yeah. like enjoy the sacrifice enjoy that so i guess in my parents state like I would say, all right, well, find like a dope place, you know, and then build your other house. Don't live there. Well, <laughs> fucking people are all there all the time. Like, yeah. find a dope place and really yeah. just have it be chill and then work on this other thing on the side. And when that's mm -hmm. done, you just transition and move on. And, you know, but don't be in this constant state of yeah. the annoyance of things <laughs> happening all the time. You know, like, enjoy it as much as you possibly can. Yeah. And that's, I think that's something that people fail to miss because you know the, the whatever thing you're working for is never that good to make up for this make up for like what you've missed in time spent in the present moment yeah especially when you really connect to like most people who accomplish amazing things are the type of people that could provide a fucking disproportionate amount of value to like their son or their lover with like one present evening yep and like it's 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 really tragic to connect to like if you go 10 years and you don't have that evening you know like with your son mm -hmm. you know when like it, it's especially the people that can do amazing things that if they just gave that five hours of one day you know of being in the present moment yeah and, and i think that's one of the things that in relationship i noticed that a lot too and at the start of a relationship you're present as fuck <laughs> the most you're the man. most yeah. present you know like you'll be on a date and even if the topic isn't interesting you're fucking right there mm -hmm. and you're enjoying it and you're engaging smelling everything yeah you're like everything. it's you're, it's, it's alive yeah. and that's part of the magic of falling in love and then mm -hmm. you get used to somebody and then you lose that thing yeah. and then of course you harken back oh i remember when we first met well really the pleasure of you when you first met was that you had these forces that were driving you into the present moment and so to like find those times when you can connect fully presently yeah like it's just fucking heaven mm -hmm. it's magical the kingdom of heaven is here the is, kingdom is of a heaven metaphor is or here. a line that people hate especially in 2018 but there's some deep wisdom and like right now it's all the wisdom yeah yeah it's all the way anytime you can be present that's absolutely where the magic lies so the weapon is to me is finding that modality of presence you know it's what i talk about in chapter seven of go for your win you know all the different ways to find stillness you know find the present moment where everything else fades away yeah so like what is that modality for you how can you at least practice getting the present well maybe it's yoga and for mm -hmm. that five minutes in shavasana you're really present and if you're really good you can get present in other poses too for sure you know but not there yet yeah <laughs> um basketball was always it for me i'm sure absolutely. it was for you like when i was playing hoop i wasn't thinking about shit absolutely man i wasn't thinking about my girls i wasn't thinking about my family i wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about anything i was thinking about just playing the game yeah. so that was always some of the place that i was the happiest now if i played a bad game then i would be living in the, the past worst. yeah fucking bebop, the, yeah, would yeah, fucking bebop was just destroying in. me yeah. you know and then i would also be rock steady of the future whether my coach was gonna fucking have some right. penalty about for some me bullshit. for the next game yeah but nonetheless when i was playing you know i was always playing any sport yeah. so that drove me into playing all competing in all kinds of levels because mm -hmm. that like was an escape flow state you know meditation hiking and fucking you know plant medicines obviously yeah i mean that is like this place where you can just sit and marvel at the world around you and just feel connected to all things and and at least feeling that helps you practice for yeah. 
the more challenging times. To know that that exists. And like, this is kind of the tragic beauty of um, witnessing the present moment, but that you know it's it's always there and you're in illusion 99.99% of your waking conscious sober time but the beauty of the present moment is right here right now and i can say these words and i still don't fully connect to it because i'm you know so immersed in my own ego illusion mm-hmm. but like um when you have the psychedelic experience or one of these other modalities and you're like it's always with me yeah I forget all the fucking time. Yeah, 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 I'm forgetting yeah. right now. Yeah, 100%. You got to have that quest too. Simple but hard. I mean, both of these, all these quests are like simple but difficult. Difficult, yeah. you know, for sure. Quest three be your authentic self. Might as well be quest 11 as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I mean, these things, again, they're simple simple yeah. idea but difficult to maintain but this is uh, and these are quests that you'll have to keep going back to for sure you know and keep keep working it's the on. new game plus that you get in a lot of role-playing games is when you beat the game you'll get to start over you have to give up all the actual like items you got but all of these skills that you learned along the way you get to bring with and that's mm-hmm. exactly what life is like yep it's all right so being your authentic self so one of the things you know robert green talks about this they talk about counter forces you know those things that try to shape you you know your parents that like my dad he wanted me to be a banker at goldman sachs mm-hmm. my dad been. wanted me to join the military <laughs> yeah <all right. laughs> would not have worked right, so if we would have listened uh, we, imagine if we would have listened yeah, imagine if i was at fucking goldman sachs just miserable and, and imagine if and you I were in the navy and just, sold dead yeah i mean maybe we'd have loved it most likely not because this definitely feels like this is where we're at so there's these counter forces that we have to be mindful of but beyond just the counter forces of our parents there's the counter forces of society yeah. as a whole it's what don miguel ruiz calls the metote or the marketplace which is the totality of public opinion telling you how you need to be yeah how your relationships need to be how you need to live what you need to do in your life what it means to be a man what it means to all of these things that kind of kink up our true shape yeah and and cause these restrictions and until we actually work on expanding like oh no what do i really believe what do i want you know how do i want to express myself and fuck man in the time we're in even sometimes laws for sure are a problem like if the law says that you know you can't smoke weed and smoking weed actually helps you understand your body better understand something then you kind of got to break the law to figure out who your authentic self is and there's this so there's two big ideas here that are subtle but one is that all these opposing forces are the primary force that gives your consciousness structure when you have no structure as an infant like if you didn't have parents you'd be dead if we didn't have culture we'd be dead so the kinks allow us to grow at the beginning but we have to come to a point where we rebel against the most important thing that existed as a force when we were infants Mm -hmm. and then that so there's this idea in um, psychology where you have to kill your parents or you have to you know rebel and eat the fruit you know and it's the thing that nurtured you you have to rebel against to become your true self yeah but like pay love to that thing like it it was so important when you were an, an infant and you if a fucking wolf roamed by you, you'd be dead yeah you know yeah there's a bible passage that ted decker's talked to me about and it's something that none nobody in like capital r religion christianity really mm-hmm. understands and it's to follow my way you have to hate your mother hate your father hate your brother hate your sister right right and they, they use the word that gets translated as hate but it doesn't really mean hate but what it means is to disregard that relationship that might impede upon yeah. who you really are you know like the need to get validation from your parents or validation from all these things or the way that they look at you mm-hmm. influencing that you must disregard all of that and so if they're sp- twisted that yeah. disregard will feel like you're hating them right and it's just a part of your test like to, to be you you might have to deal with their emotional reactions with you being in your truth and you know that it's another mini hero's journey because everybody who does that, you know, if their da- if their parents say you'll never be an artist, you'll never make it, they succeed as an artist, give their parents that artwork, 
and the parents are like i'm so happy you did yeah this. And, they're I love, I love, and, and they're crying and they're crying and they, they apologize you. yeah exactly and it's this full way full circle you just have to go through that journey yeah. that journey of you know it's like the, even in the batman in every batman story there's a time where gotham turns on him yeah you know and it's like there's hate there and then is he still batman at that point is yeah. he still follow through is he still the hero that he always was you know like making sure that you're authentically you without needing anything from anybody else and to do that your weapon is you know self-love like you got to know that you don't need the love of your parents to be visible yeah. the love is always going to be there in the higher vibration their higher self is always going to be in a state of love with you but their small self their ego may get triggered because you're not following their way or what you're doing is challenging their validation yeah. as being good parents or their validation is you know my son is at goldman sachs that's really just what my dad wanted to be able to tell his buddies who worked mm -hmm. at fucking lehman brothers or wherever yeah. the fuck they were you know and but it's not like he wasn't happy for me when i was doing my own way amen but it everybody gets caught in their own ego trap so knowing that you know if you love yourself enough and know yourself enough then that's your weapon to fight through all of this need for validation and just follow your authentic star swing your authentic swing is that yeah. book is for stephen pressfield and the thing that you'll actually become aware of from quest two is that when you really connect to the present moment and you get quiet enough you'll start to recognize that there's actually a thing in your psyche kind of behind you watching you that loves you and that thing is always there yeah and it's that thing's love that is always radiating and it's that thing's love that can attune you if the world is completely in discord and not showing you love mm -hmm. like and so if you connect to the moment you can connect to that thing that is always there like the fucking sun just beaming and really it's love is self aware or it's it's love is awareness of you yep you know it's like it's it's awareness animates you it's always there yeah and that's has a bunch of words <laughs> right? like yeah. if you go listen to my yeah. first podcast with paul check he likes the word soul for that mm -hmm. you know and he used, yeah. he's comfortable with the word soul and he does that little exercise where you ask your soul questions but to do that, you have to get still because yeah. the ego's good at masquerading as the stole. It wants to step it, into that beam of light and yeah. have you worship it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So finding that higher self, divine self, Christed self, soul, you know, whatever, whatever your vocabulary yeah. permits, there's that part of you that knows best. A quick side note, the Greeks call it a daemon. And, be, and when capital R wanted you to only listen to the book or the people in power, that turned into demon. Like the idea that you had a thing in you that could give you commands that were beyond any other human. If I'm trying to control you, that's a demon and not my demon. Wow. Yeah. That's for real? Yeah. Yeah. Like in Unreal. the Greeks, it was their demon. And, and the power of Socrates was that he was the man who only listened to his demon. Yeah. Then capital R comes around. We, we can't be having that. You have to come to us to get the insights. Demon matt damon <laughs> <laughs> that was for you god's that's a dope last name pun puns fucking stick uh, thank you for that yes all right quest four turn pro and this is you know a concept that i'm borrowing directly from stephen pressfield yeah right this is you know when you know you kind of have an idea who you are right it's it's going to be time to actually turn pro and do what you would do yeah. and do what you need to do and he uses the analogy of writing because he's a writer right mm -hmm. and he's like the difference between a pro and an amateur is an amateur will sit around waiting for the muse to come inspire him to write and the pro sits his ass down in that chair 9 a.m every day so that the muse knows where to fucking find him and so when the you know and you just keep going and then yeah. and then the muse shows up like that's the difference pros don't make excuses pros don't do these things so it's it's almost like an ethos mm -hmm. you know an ethos to battle what your boss battle is which is resistance that yeah. capital r resistance he talks about in war of art and talks about in turning pro as well that force that's going to try and keep you from getting higher when you're lower keep mm -hmm. you from advancing and that's an internal force that's an external force and you know at some point we got to say like thank you for this resistance that's yeah. going to allow me the the pressure the gravity by which so i can go strong yeah you know that's going to be the 
cocoon like we you talked about in that Absolutely. podcast it's going to give our wings enough force that when we burst through it we have the strength to fly like thanks resistance resistance is your greatest ally it is your ally it's the thing that's going to make you and i i really like the way that this is laid out because if you become present you can connect and start to discover what your authentic self is asking you to do mm -hmm. and when you recognize that call to adventure it's it's time to bow your fucking head and be a student and and learn and that's when like that's what turning pro is is basically creating the habits where you begin to hone the skills and it's finding your authentic self that will whisper to you like these are the skills that you need yep it's like all right it's time to bow my fucking head and start grinding yep and that's you know i think developing your ethos that warrior ethos you know it's something i talk about at the end of own the day but pro it's going to require a certain sense of discipline yeah. whereas like mental override is the basic step that's kind of what you do in the when you really have to think about something mm -hmm. But when you have an ethos, you don't think about it anymore. Right. It when you're a pro, automatic. it's it's just automatic. Like there's not a question, there's not a debate. You don't have to tap your willpower. It's like that's a good point. Yeah. There's no choice anymore. This yeah. is my ethos. Like never give up, never surrender. That was the Spartan ethos. They didn't have the thought in their mind like, oh, fuck, should we run away? Right. Should we like maybe fight another day? They just removed that from the category of options. So it wasn't. It wasn't even. It wasn't even courage at that necessarily that because it wasn't even a choice it was no. like well here we go fighting to the last man you know yeah. but because that and that because that was universal and part of their ethos their enemies you know always knew like fuck i gotta pack a lunch if i'm going yeah. against the red capes if they have one we need a hundred yeah exactly because yeah. they're they're not going to run away we're yeah. not going to only be able to beat you know the first 10 percent and then you know get away from this we're we got to go in every single one every single one and also for the people fighting it just makes things simpler because like what's the torture the torture that we really feel in in any decision it's like should i go to the gym should i not go to the gym right. should i go to the gym should i not go to, oh my god what should i do should i do this or no no that's what actually is really painful yeah. when you actually do it even like when you know you need to break up with your girl or break up with your guy or whatever it's like should i do it should i not do it? should i do it blah 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 it's the wavering with the waffling back and forth yeah. it's like bending your will back and forth until you just get weaker and weaker and right. it's, it's exhausting but when you have ethos i okay, no, this is my ethos it's not a choice yeah i don't have that option in cognitive psychology they call sh shit like this um a, a bright line rule but it's it's basically a articulated rule that like once this happens it's like a computer i know exactly what to do and so like if if you are to be a writer like you every single day you fucking sit down and you write like it's it's not even something you don't allow the demon of resistance to come into the house and dance it's like no the door shut no yeah you know it's no and building whatever that is for you and then you know making sure that it's something that's solid that you can yeah. keep because like you also will weaken your ethos if you like my ethos is i'm never going to watch porn right and then it lasts right. five days it's unrealistic. And like day six yeah. like fuck there I am back on tushy.com <laughs> you know like oddly specific <laughs> and then like, <laughs> and so like that's that's something that you have to be mindful of. so yeah. maybe that's like a guideline like, yeah but if you make it your ethos like make it your fucking ethos yeah like make it something that really sticks and so be mindful of that so build things with willpower and then when you're ready make it stick and do your best to stick to it now if you do fucking fail like okay cool yeah. like forgive move on rebuild it back into your ethos but having those things that you don't even question like that's fucking super important it's like a superpower superpower sure. turning pro that's what pro does yeah man we're fucking we're getting after i just got the 50 minute <laughs> yeah. sign and we're on fucking quest four no matter no nope. people are with us you with us people all right people are with us if they you see us as yourself you'll know exactly where we're going oh shit Segway. Segway. <laughs> quest five see others as yourself um and this is like to me the deepest metaphysical principle mm -hmm. that really guides you know our understanding of the world and morality and i think that is an important thing i called it on joe rogan experience i called it the platinum rule yeah right do unto others as if they were you mm -hmm. you know not do unto others as you would like them to do it to yourself which i think is actually the true meaning of that if you talk to ted decker is the same thing for sure like do unto others because they are you living a different life yeah 
like everybody is you living a different life it's the only thing and to me like you know and i know i have my own weapon here you know certainly for me it's been psychedelic medicine you know which has really helped me defeat the enemy of this which is the ego because the ego says i am separate i am the only thing that's real i am the only thing that matters yeah because it only knows itself as relative it knows itself in pure relative position to all other things and it feels like it's the only thing that matters so a sociopath is someone with such an overblown ego and it's so big that they don't actually recognize that anybody else is real right or that anything outside themselves is real so they just try to put everything else underneath them Mm -hmm. whereas the opposite which is in accord with truth is that everybody is same and there's a couple ways to do that one psychedelic medicine you'll feel it yeah you'll really feel it when that happens and two for me like my relationship has done like probably been the fucking forge that's helped out the most can be in an open relationship and having somebody with my lover if i don't see that other person as me and if i don't see whitney Mm -hmm. as me that's the key i think is not recognizing that your lover is like you is me her pleasure is my pleasure my pleasure is her pleasure random other lover their pleasure is my pleasure my pleasure is their pleasure twisting just hearing the words the ego's like (laughs) fuck no it's mine yeah it's my girl this is my thing this is my thing nothing else but me matters And if you think about it like that's where ego in our culture is allowed to hide is in monogamous relationships it's like no this is where all my reciprocity all my altruism no this is my person only i can give them love and it's culturally accepted yep exactly and you got to transcend that to really have a true that's what gives you that love to be of service that's what makes you want to be fit for service and makes you want to be of service is knowing that these people around you are real because they're the same as you and you're real you know like you have to know that in order to even love somebody and even care about somebody enough to actually do that you know and so uh, again with all these quests this could be quest 10 or this could be (laughs) quest 5 but you have to at least see and it starts with maybe seeing one other person as yourself like it's Mm. easier to do that with your homie maybe at first rather than your luck because it's less triggering like it's easy for me to see kyle as myself or you as myself and then you know whitney gets a little harder and then (laughs) whitney's random lover who i don't know the hardest oh the hardest you know i want to stab him in the neck (laughs) that's not me i want to fucking (laughs) to be in truth i will yeah (laughs) i will go (laughs) i remember oh man i i'm i'll tell this story because it's a secret podcast yeah i remember (laughs) i remember she was starting to see this guy and he was a fighter and he was in the ufc and uh and it hadn't nothing really had happened yet but there was some exchanges and and um this was early on in the relationship and i remember i was watching him fight on tv and i go man i hope he wins but i hope he wins because the other guy kicks him in the nuts so many times (laughs) that he gets disqualified just the shittiest (laughs) shit right and i was like well i was like well at least i want him to win but i want him to win by the other person dqing because he and guess what fucking happened it fucking happened no way I, I even i even verbalized it to like my homies i was like yeah i hope he wins i hope he wins because the other guy kicks him in the nuts so many times he gets disqualified and it fucking happened and i was like no way that's so am weird. i in a fucking simulation i <laughs> have that thought a lot recently especially having the job at on it at least once every couple months i'm like fuck is this real yeah yeah i mean it's 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 amazing and that was like a just a fucking mind-blowing moment but of course that was my failure it was me doing like the bare minute okay i hope he wins you right. know like i don't want him to like lose and get like beat up but if my ego was still holding on i wasn't seeing I him to suffer <laughs> yeah. fucking suffer yeah, yeah exactly. i want him to lose in the way where he can't do the thing to my girl that i don't want him <laughs> to I'm do i'm desperately That's afraid exactly he's gonna do what i don't want oh man yeah. and a thing that i would offer to the like so I grew up in the materialistic science worldview and like it's deep to my core in my identity. But I think a path to the same understanding is we all share the human condition and the human apparatus that creates this condition. And it is so hard. Like there are so many things that can make people suffer and everyone's shittiness, everyone's life, they all want the same things. And it's like love, security meaning and like that's in everybody and if you can connect to that humanness in someone else if they cut you off like 
on the street or if you know some mom is yelling at her child somewhere and it's just like deep in that person's ego is just the thing that wants love security and meaning and that's in everybody and yep. we all want it and if you can connect to that it's so much easier to be compassionate and it's loving. the core of every great spiritual teaching whether it's christianity where it's the hawaiian kahunas with the whole pono pono yeah. you know whenever you see something that offends you recognize that that's you in a different life in a different body yeah. doing that same thing like how do you express that same thing they had different traumas different traumas different things that are coming up, up or a different ways. moment in time you know and, and just always seeing the self it's that practice of metanoia where paul Selig yeah. would say like seeing the high self in somebody else where you don't you, you don't you recognize that they're expressing yeah. an anger but you see that all right they haven't passed level one where their machine is in yeah. balance they haven't passed level two where they're in the present moment they're stressed out of their mind they got all these things going on and see that and just have that's what allows you to have compassion you know and then you have yeah. that compassion and see them as self then the whole world looks differently you don't get offended you don't get triggered by that like shit i just posted that thing <laughs> on open relationship and i got called every name in the world Ooh. right and like uh, seeing instead of receiving that as an insult like oh my god why are these people doing this to me how right. dare they which is what the ego wants to do like how dare they i'm just trying to be helpful <laughs> I, I fucking hate you fuck you too you know <laughs> yeah instead being like oh man, i see that this way of life even that it exists is triggering yeah. and so recognize the fear that that came from and just send love you know and have some laughs and yeah. see their see their higher self which is also in some ways kind of like shaking their head and laughing at what the smaller self yeah is doing in anger god i feel that a lot my higher self just shaking its head laughing <laughs> yeah, totally. at me oh all god the time damn it, Eric. all the time yeah. and that's like when i do a heroic psilocybin dose it's constantly me looking back at Giggles myself at my own stupidity <laughs> yeah. at your own stupidity constantly like god dang mm. i really thought i had it figured yeah, out man. i'm fucking an idiot yeah and then you just laugh and forgive and move on there's this great goethe quote and by the way my whole life i thought it was goth and then i heard someone pronounce it and know, it's right? fucking goethe. goethe the fuck anyways there's a secret r in there right um but it's uh i will not do you the disservice of treating you as your lower self but loving your higher self and i i butchered that but the idea is like the greatest love you can give to someone is to act to their higher self to call it forward mm -hmm. like you don't even engage with a small ego yeah. like i don't even care about that i'm trying to connect to your higher self and that's what actually calls it forward it's exactly. what paul Selig says like the minute you put someone in the cave so the minute you agree with their anger and agree with their yeah. judgment and get triggered by it and are judging them oh that person's unconscious that person's in their small self and blah blah, blah and you're just seeing all of that and like really emotionally engaging that rather than just being the passive observer of that yeah you go right there with them sure. you're walking them hand in hand wherever you want to go however however you're judging somebody yeah. you're going there with them you can't fucking help it and the opposite is true the opposite is true is that if you look for their higher self you guys both go flying up towards the sun yep no doubt quest six no true love how aubrey how? i don't know <laughs> man well we're we are love that's the secret of this like people think you got to go looking for it you gotta go find yeah. it where do i find true love have it reflect it. you're fucking true love you are true love you are true love expressed somatically every second all the fucking time and it's only your fear and delusion that is keeping you from recognizing that state of that state of love and whether that's love that you express amongst other people whether that's love you express with yourself your community your tribe your earth it's always fear that masks that and puts clouds between you and the sun you know so the boss battle there is fear that's a fucking boss man it's a boss and you know we could probably do a whole podcast yeah. on fear and you know but really knowing i think the key thing is just knowing that truth is that love is always there it's like the present moment it doesn't go anywhere yeah it's with you constantly like the state of love is with you constantly and it's between whoever you're with constantly because their love too your yeah. love their love what's in between i don't know ego fear delusion you know and so it's less about going out and finding love or cultivating love it's about clearing out the other shit you know clearing out all the fear pushing the clouds from the sky so that you can actually feel the sun warming your heart 
what is something that we could give people listening, like a concrete thing that they can do when they're experiencing fear so they can connect to truth? You know, it's, I think the key thing, there's a lot of intermittent tactics. There's exposure therapy. There's ways mm -hmm. to like handle fear. And I think we talk about a lot of those in the Go For Your Win course as well. Yeah. And, um, but I think the big thing is, is to understand who you are so you and knowing that you're loved so you understand that that fear isn't real and it's it's a long journey because yeah. then you have to really understand and identify as that force of consciousness as your christ itself as your divine self your higher self whatever the, this thing that we've been using consciousness you have to identify as that and understand that that thing is above fear it's beyond fear it's in a yeah. place where fear doesn't exist and so you elevate your understanding to that level and then recognize that all right there may be all these other challenges and potential for pain and potential mm -hmm. for all of this but that's only temporarily going to touch you because the truth is that you're beyond it and i would really recommend at this level you know it's a shift in identification like there's that einstein quote you can't solve a problem on the same level that it's created right you know there's um you know muji that basically there's a buddhist teacher saying that basically if you're going as your ego and you're going as your mind you're constantly on fire and if you're trying to put out fires while you're constantly on fire <sighs> you can't put out fires while you're on fire yeah. like imagine your hands are just on fire just, and you're trying to tend to fire right it's the it's not gonna work Midas touch yeah exactly the opposite one. the opposite one the fear touch <sighs> anything you do in fear is bound in fear yeah so you elevate yourself to love and just let the fear evaporate let the fires yeah. go out on their own because you realize that you're not able to be burned and i think so a thing that came up in me uh when i asked that question is like people at home can qu very quickly make a fucking list of like what are 10 things that you are afraid of that you know are stupid and then like once a week could be a fear date like mm -hmm. you take your your fucking weak ego out on a fear date and do one of the things on that list like one might be like walk up to a girl and ask her for her number yep fear date you know or one might be like collapsing and again it's collapsing the delusion exactly that you need her validation to make you worthy of love because right. that's really what you're afraid of because like, what is the sting knows. what is the sting of, of rejection if you didn't receive it yourself and use that as a mirror to look back at yourself and not give yourself love yeah there's no difference you yeah. go up there and you get rejected it's no different than not talking to them. It's a relationship that's not going to go anywhere, <laughs> right? It's this fucking yeah. same thing. But because of our own ego and our uh, look, oh my God, it must mean that I'm ugly or I'm not right. worthy, I'm stupid or whatever. You just quit that because that's all fear and delusion anyways and just open up the possibility. It can only be a net win. Yeah. And I think what people recognize is that the shit that you're afraid of, you aren't afraid of the thing. You have a response to what you think the thing will be and if you consistently make yourself do things that you're afraid of, you recognize that like fear is this psychic cloud that is not ever the thing. And if you mm -hmm. go do the thing, the cloud moves. Like it can't <laughs> exist in the same place that the event occurs. It's a thing that only exists in your thinking about or anticipating the event. You know? Yeah, it's like it's like a phantom. And you yeah. have to identify in the vibrator, in the dimension of that phantom to for it to it, affect yeah. you. Yeah you know like that's the only way that it can hurt you and as soon as you shift your identification beyond that then the phantom can it tries to slash you yeah. and it goes right through you like oh or do you try to punch me you're a ghost <laughs> like you missed yeah you'll continue to miss because yeah. you're a ghost and it and then it it stops mm -hmm. you know and you just dispel it with the light of your identification and it, it, the same thing happens in dreams is like if something's chasing you in your dreams if you don't look at it 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 runs the whole dream mm -hmm. but if you turn around and look at the thing at least every experience i've ever had and every experience i've ever heard anyone talk about it the thing that you thought was chasing you if you look at it it's always something like young or weak or small or old or broken that you weren't looking at and i think that that translates to how fear operates in the conscious world and that's too. the beauty of the psychedelic experience because it's like a lucid fucking dream yeah right so you get that choice to turn and face it you know if like the the devil or the demon comes you get the choice to face it and give it love and watch what happens to it and i've told those stories a bunch of times from ayahuasca or even a dream that you woke up as soon as you face it and show and be in love it's not gonna it's not gonna fuck yeah. with you yeah oh oh face your shadow quest seven 
um you know this you basically is, just did that one that was yeah, a segue that's it i mean that's really that's really what about the same thing that we're talking about like to know true love you have to face your shadow so presumably i could have swapped those face your shadow then no true love i think that would have made some sense but it's these are the inner parts of yourself like i guess in the hero's journey like we did in the pocket approach to the inmost cave you know mm-hmm. like where your deepest shadow lives and where your fear but it's not just your fear so this is slightly different because part of it is your fear and part of it is recognizing the savage nature of the animal itself yeah like that's the there's there's darkness built into the primate so so you talk about quest one it's like knowing your primate like knowing that the muscles get strong like there's weird pleasure impulses from doing bad things 100 percent like and those are built in because they were evolutionarily of an advantage so you get you get a pleasurable response from things that hurt people yeah that's part of the primate right like that's in every be, single one that's of in us. every single one of us it deep down in there and that could be something sexual that could be something whatever like however that is there's shadow parts yeah. there's shadow parts that feel good to hurt and like i can recognize it in my own ego that i have to suppress aspects of my shadow because the idea of them being true makes me so or makes my ego so uncomfortable yeah because you want to look at yourself as a good person and a a peaceful person and a kind person and you are because you identify with those things but somewhere in the body is programming for a different choose your own adventure the (laughs) archetype of the murderer of the rapist of the dictator is in every single person and it's so unnerving that a lot of people will do everything they can not to face their shadow. And then that shadow comes and it gets a command position right in your unconscious yeah, and, it fucks and, you it, up. and it drives you to it. And then you use all kinds of rationalizations to still think of yourself as a good person, yeah. but do those things anyway. So you try to steal the good feeling, but without the awareness. So you don't have to judge yourself as being a shitty person. So you use all these rationalizations yeah. and justifications and you know, and the weapon to that boss is love slash it's it's awareness that you've already cultivated at the previous steps but then it's having love for those pieces because knowing they are there allows you true choice yep. if you're unconscious of them they will fucking come up behind you put a mask over your eyes exactly so awareness first awareness is like what exposes right what exposes the boss all the snakes all the yeah, dragons it exposes your boss to the weapon and then ultimately wow yeah yeah that once the web once it's exposed so it's like a two-part like you have For to cast sure. the spell to weaken the armor <laughs> exactly. it's like every it's like every movie right yeah. it's like how do you lower the defense shields lower the defense every shield. boss battle can't just be attacked you have to do something to make it pr- open to the attack exactly and that's this yeah it's like all the star how do we get the shields to go down for a minute right. i don't know you get the shields to go down for a minute because you become aware of it and become aware of the issue and then you strike only with love yeah you know and just this recognition like oh there is the savage part of the animal inside me like i love that that's i love i have love for that part i'm not ever going to allow myself to express that because it's not who i am but it's there and i give it love and i recognize it and that just quells it that allows Mm -hmm. you to bring it into your conscious out of your subconscious it tames it and it's there and you know it's there and you know that you're a mixed force you're not yeah. just all good straight out of the drop you know but you know that now that you can control it, you're the master and it right. doesn't master you your demons are not in control there's this great um idea that jordan peterson talked about on one of his podcasts but he was looking at the etymology of the quote from the bible where it's the meek shall inherit the earth mm. and he was really confused like why is that written like i don't get it and he consulted some scholars and they basically told him that the root of meek, like what that sentence was saying is that those who have swords but keep them sheathed are the ones who will inherit the world. And so the psychological aspect of that is like that person who can be murderous or monstrous or vicious, but chooses not to, that's the most powerful type of person. Mm. And that takes awareness and it takes ultimately a recognition of that so you're not in constant conflict with it so that you can actually be self and love is what ends any resolution and ends any conflict truly ends because there might be other ways that you think end it but it perpetuates it because it's not over like if you do it in hate or deceit that that dance is not over no i like and, and again psychedelics are a great way to practice this like if something comes at you in a psychedelic trip like fight it 
good luck pack a lunch have fun. we do not advise that you fight it <laughs> yeah like yeah. have fun because yeah. you're gonna because it's gonna love that and yeah. you're gonna be dancing back and forth fighting if it's a big snake or whatever and you're going and it's yipping at you and you're dodging it and you're strangling it and you you can win some of those you know but you're going to be in the level of conflict until right, right. you until you look at it and go snake we're all one connected at the unicity of all things you're mm -hmm. acting in the role of resistance i'm acting in the role of assistance thank you thank you i love you and then imagine if it comes at you imagine it just like that ghost trying to bite you but you're not there right. and you just give it love and just watch how calmly that thing goes away because i've tried yeah. both i've tried both in the <laughs> astral and these visions you yeah. know and one works and one doesn't fucking work and one fills you with terror you yeah know? so that's the uh that's the move and it's counterintuitive because you know you, you think you want to take the sword but your sword is love yeah it's you know so there's the archetype of the king in us and there's the archetype of the warrior and ultimately i think the king archetype is the highest mm -hmm. archetype and it's it's the thing that loves and organizes like the warrior is great and it serves a function but the throne is for the king yeah and the main weapon of the king is love like mm -hmm. really the castles and the countries that flourish in the myths is the loving king it's yeah. not ever Camelot. the warring exactly it's never the warring king it's not the fucking sick king it's not the petty monstrous king it's yep. the loving king yep be a mentor quest eight you know i think this is something that is really important because at this level you've made it through quest seven it's like you're gonna find a lot of people even if you've made it through quest one right like don't wait to be a mentor till you finish all the quests right like if you've got your physical shit in order okay be a mentor if you've made it to fucking quest two or maybe you've missed quest one but you made it you passed quest two and whatever wherever you are like you'll find somebody who's struggling with that right. thing all you have to do is be one step ahead and be you one can step help ahead the people behind you. and you help the people behind you and, and that will actually make you better by doing it like yeah. if you want to learn teach i think that was yogi Bhajan that that said that and it's absolutely true like the process of being a mentor will help you reinforce that thing right. that you learn and even if it's a skill like you want to get better at pool like teach someone how to play pool yeah. you know you want to get better at shooting like teach them because it'll remind you of the fundamentals it'll make you more aware of what you're doing yeah. and what you need to keep in mind so it'll always always help and nothing exposes what you don't know more than when you try to teach something to someone because there's this weird game that can happen inside your mind where you think you know something you're like oh yeah i get that but the moment you have to teach another human how to do it you recognize fuck i don't understand this at all mm -hmm. you know yep exactly so self-limiting belief this idea that who are we to teach you know right. we still have so much to learn yeah I do you always that. have so much to learn always will you know you, the master is a perpetual student but at a certain point sharing what you have is the most humble way that you can be of service yeah and an essential way as well all right um your weapon of course in that is experience any any experiences you have that you've learned from like yeah. that's that's your way to to beat these self-limiting beliefs just gather experience get those experience points up you know this is a video game so anytime you learn something every time i beat one of my mini bouts of depression it's another experience point and another yeah. lesson another pearl that i can bring in even if it's something similar that i've already learned it's another thing that i can add to sharing with people sharing on this podcast sharing on in some other way where i can play the role of mentor and i think that's the thing that imbues all suffering with meaning is that if you have the intention that one day i can teach this to other humans and they don't have to suffer as much as i do like mm -hmm. it transmutes the worst suffering into something meaningful if you have the intent that i i can share this and teach this to other humans so they don't have to suffer as much as me yep exactly it makes you it gives meaning gives meaning you know and everything. when you have meaning you can endure pretty much yeah. anything when you know the why you can endure anyhow right you know that's true wisdom quest nine is related and i called it serve your medicine and part of it is serving your medicine as a mentor mm -hmm. but part of it is just singing your song yeah you know in all the ways that you can sing your song and this is you know because so like for me you could say like writing own the day is being a mentor kind of but it's also me serving my medicine it's me catalyzing everything putting myself out there in a big way and singing that song of the medicine song of basically quest one and two which is really what own the day kind of <laughs> covers yeah. right and my other books will cover that or being on a big podcast or you know part of you serving your medicine like you've been a mentor 
in the office you know working with different people helping people on the team mm -hmm. you know you jumping on the podcast and and dropping that that's you serving your medicine that's you mm -hmm. stepping up and, and you were fucking nervous right like very so you're nervous before that but you make the choice to go ahead anyways yeah. and you make the choice to and for some people like whitney and in particular like part of her medicine is actually literally going literally, to be a song yeah you know and she knows it and she's scared to do it but when she gets out there and sings in front of people mm -hmm. she'll be serving her medicine and that's that's that final stage that's you know that's coming home that's yeah. bringing coming home with the elixir that's that final you know final stage of the hero's journey it's like i've done all this stuff now i'm ready to step up and serve my medicine to those to those i love and what i've witnessed and i'm sure anyone along the path has had this experience too but those things which you are the most nervous before if you go and do the high on the other side is greater than anything oh man that that you experience in your life and it, it's such a weird way to wire us but it's like it like clockwork do the thing you are most afraid of and the high on the other side is greater than anything that you've experienced you'll just be vibrating at a whole other level yeah it's like it's fucking wild when you know that you've really done it Mm -hmm. you know and i get these moments i get when i get these moments they're so crazy it's like a deep stillness and a deep satisfaction you know and it could be like i went on a big podcast or even yeah. i recorded one myself like after the jordan peterson podcast it's like a weird state where i was like wow that one was important yeah you know after well, actually when i went as a guest on tim ferris when i did you know my own the day talks on the book launch like you come off and you go oh shit like, like that was something ultimate entunement. that was something that was really special and it, yeah. i don't even want to talk about it i don't want to jump up and down and cheer it's, it's not sacred. like the exhilaration of like hitting a shot or dunking on somebody yeah. not that i was ever able to jump high enough to dunk <laughs> on people but i imagine but we thought like, about it we thought about it <laughs> fucking every night <laughs> but like it's not that thing it's a different thing it's a, like a, a another level and you'll feel that from overcoming those things that you've been terrified of and once you have that experience a couple of times, it actually allows you to reconnect to the fact that fear on some level is your greatest ally because it is like a radar pointing you to the experiences in life that will be the most rewarding possible. Like that apprehension is drawing you towards parts of the map that you don't know. And if you could change the way that you reactively respond to fear, instead of not to do as this thing is showing me exactly the way is to move right into it mm -hmm. you know and then on the other side is that feeling of i have a destiny i've worked my ass off and i'm hitting the marks yeah i'm hitting the marks on the song of my life yep you're you're living the game of life you're accepting the quests like the and fear the, the fear shows you the quest it's like yeah how do i know what the my quest shows is you the quest that's you know, a meme yeah yeah exactly and how do i know in, wow. in a video game it's usually some person in the tavern or some way that you get a note or fucking the raven yeah. comes i don't know whatever the in this in real life it's, it's fear it's going to wow. show you and what we're not saying is danger we're not saying like right not the same fear and danger we're not even using those words as sim danger is a real thing like be aware of danger danger can create technically fear would be the you know what the only the word time it's happening biologically correctly yeah yeah exactly but the way that we're talking about it's not what we're talking mm -hmm. about but in in all other aspects that capital f fear that we're talking about yeah that points the way to your quest so, so, spot take, on. so take a dialogue and look around and be like all right what's my next quest well i'm afraid of this i'm afraid of this i'm afraid of this. okay let's go public speaking okay and if let's you go. really do that your life will fucking transform so quickly it will barely make sense to you yeah if you actively <laughs> seek out the fear yep it's it's transformed my life in the last year yep no doubt um obviously self-judgment self-criticism you know that's what keeps whitney from singing that's what keeps people from publishing their book or finishing their screenplay or that, the podcast you know it's all of that thing that it's taking that on taking that on yourself yeah and and taking somebody else's reactions wrapped in validation fear and just knowing that forgiveness you know like let's say again i keep using whitney's analogy but it's such a clear thing like let's say she goes to sing and her voice cracks and she forgets the words like at that point forgiveness yeah for you have to know pre in advance that you're going to forgive if you miss that final shot in the game you're going to forgive if you bomb the podcast you're going to forgive 
your job is to just show Try. up and do your best. I would have tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I fucking sure. still think about basketball games in high school Same. that I did. Uh, <laughs> Same. I fucked up on. Wasn't right? even that important, but I still think about <laughs> yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. Forgiveness, man. I fucking still, I think about this, man. You know what? One that beat me up more than maybe anything was the opening night of my Commedia dell'arte play, uh, the Venetian Twins, it was a big play in Richmond. And I was, it's an improv play. So you're allowed to go off script and just kind of fucking have fun, right? It's, it's yeah. Italian comedy. You're wearing masks and it's improv. And my fucking, uh, I had like a wardrobe malfunction and my sword fell off my belt. And like, I never thought of that as like a possibility because like right. we got a new sword for opening night and like instead of using the other one, we had like full costume and like we had dress rehearsal, but it wasn't quite the same. Right. And whatever that didn't attach it right. And I like, I like froze. I was like, fuck. Whereas I should have been like, you know, because you broke the fourth wall in that. So I exactly. could have been like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. My, my, my sword fell, <laughs> stupid plastics here. And they called someone up to the audience, hold my sword for me. You right, know, like, yeah. And something like that. And it would have been a great moment. But I didn't. And I didn't have that agility of mind. Right. And I hadn't played that scenario. So I like, and I could just feel the weight of the Dude. crowd going like, oh. <gasps> what happened because you know? they're picking up on totally. your fear and right. if i would have just been cool and just you know and i and i i thought about that and i would just cringe right for like for yeah, a man. dozen years after that you know what i mean and ultimately that was not helpful you know? <laughs> <laughs> 12 not years hel that was not no. helpful 12 years a slave forgive you yeah. were <laughs> yeah exactly forgiveness it's like yeah. yeah okay i didn't think of that you know yeah oh fine no big deal Forgiveness. And, and to tie that back to the past thing, like a part of your brain was trying to really calibrate if something like that happens again, how to act. And mm -hmm. then once you learn that lesson, kiss that monster goodbye, your story made me think of a story that I still think about. Um, third grade, I was King Trident for uh, The Little Mermaid. And my one line was, uh, we are not humans, we are mermaids. And in front of like all the parents who don't give a fuck, of like we are not mermaids we are humans and i still think it's, it's been 20 years man yeah i still think about that sometimes well, humans are funny fucking <laughs> you know what i'm a saying funny, we're a funny self-torturing fucking yeah. breed yeah but ultimately yeah, of consciousness learn the learn the lesson and forgive you know and, and i think it was it's also probably for both of us we're not in theater anymore no so that almost makes it worse because we didn't get to make up we didn't get mm. to like show that we learned the lesson right. like i didn't do enough improv comedy that the next time i had a wardrobe malfunction i handled it smooth interesting what could yeah. be the conclusion of that journey right. and like catalyze it yeah in a way and you never got to deliver that line again never just, again just right you just know sat in perpetual so we got to find the analogy of like how does that apply to life and recognize oh we've already been doing those things i've already right. been quick enough when something happened on a For podcast sure. or i had an opportunity and that is the same thing that is me taking the lesson and learning it but that's actually a great point yeah mm -hmm. final quest okay it's a big one <laughs> you know and that means knowing that you know okay translating roughly some people say let's go but really a lot of you know talking to daniele bellelli and people understanding the lakota culture means today is a good day to die yeah which is this principle that I've lived so fully, lived so well, lived my life, taken all the quests, used fear as a wayfinder, lived in the present moment, found true love, sung my song, shared my medicine. I go to this day with an open heart. And if today is my day, so be it. Okay, hey, let's go. You know, and that is, when you're in that state, to me, that is the, that is the highest state. Because then everything else from there, it's just fucking gravy, you know? That's the peak human state that I don't know if I've ever tasted just to know that that is a possibility like and you know it's weird before i really had meaning in my life i i thought i was here i thought like yeah i could die today and i'm and i'm fine but really it was because i had never accepted meaning mm -hmm. fully mm -hmm. and then once i took on like there's a project in my life that i want to work towards my entire life now i have fear of death yeah it's weird yeah you know and i don't think i've tasted that yet but uh it's something that can be aimed at. And it's something that it is relative to time, right? Like, and, and relative to understanding that you may not have all the time to do it, but have you lived as best you can up to this point? Right. You know, and ha have you put all those things together? Yeah. So, so for me, like a big moment of that was, you know, I actually had a mini moment of that when I finished Go For Your Win. 
is that at that point that was the accumulation of a great chunk of my knowledge that was rattling around in my head scattered through a you know a hundred podcasts but i was like i put it all together in one place and i just finished a big dieta and i just tasted a lot of the different aspects of understanding myself and understanding the world beyond and and i had this kind of hoka hey moment you know i was like oh mm-hmm. yeah i tasted it and i had another hoka hey moment when i tasted you know after after own the day and i've had some after big events where it's like whew, right i made it i made yeah. it through this thing you know each time it happens after you give birth it does yeah, yeah. it happens after it happens when i feel like i've caught up you know like the funny thing is like if i've learned a whole bunch and haven't shared my medicine right like it's like i'm holding medicine and the medicine would die with me and if i feel like the medicine would die with me i'm yeah. not in hoka hey i'm like no 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 not yet uh fucking scratch somebody right. record this like let me record my final thing it's like no like, wait wait any last request no let me tell people i love them right don't be the person who needs to tell people that you love them right in the fucking right. don't be when the plane is crashing you're thinking like I should have fucking told my kid how much I loved him. I should have yeah. told my wife how much I love. I wish I would have fucking finished that thing I was working on and you know whatever like try to get as much of your medicine out as possible, express that love as freely as yeah. possible so that if it is that time and I and I think about that in planes, right? Cuz that's the most out of control yeah. situation you could be. <laughs> yeah. And and that's my kind of like hoka hey check-in point. Like if this thing went it went that's down dope. now. Yeah. Like how would I feel about it? And I was like more and more I've used that as a guide star to be like you know what i'd feel pretty fucking good you know i feel i'd feel pretty good i got at least most of my body of knowledge has been out out of my body out yeah. of my body i've served the medicine i've left the best mark i could i've lived i've loved i've tasted i've experienced i've fucked i've enjoyed i've like i fucking i had a human experience yeah, for here. Sure. and i think that's that is the guide star and then hopefully when it is our time you know it's just all fucking it's laughs and smiles and kisses and grace and and it's like hell yeah you know i'd I'd lived this thing as absolute best i could if you can go out like like huxley yeah on 400 micrograms given to (laughs) him by his lover let go let go sweetie if you want to cry read read uh (sighs) aldous huxley's wife's account a timeless moment i think is what it's called dude yeah anthony bosis reads that as part of his talks and like the first time he read it i'm a huge huxley fan too but i had never heard that before and i he read that and i was just like it's so beautiful sobbing you know it's like so beautiful and so powerful it reframes this kind of and again the boss battle here is attachment right like if you get too attached to this experience then you're never going to be able to be willing to have that moment to let go. You're too attached to the perfection of your thing. Right. You're too attached to all your ego. You're, you're too in love attached. With your sandcastle. You're in love with your sandcastle, and you'll be terrified. Like, no, no, no! Don't pull the plug. No matter, no matter what, keep them alive. Keep them on the pumps. You know, there's like no, no grace. grace. Yeah, no grace to the end, because everybody's so attached. They're attached. When it's time, it's time. Yeah, like if you've lived fully you know you go you go with a smile you rainbow out of this bitch <laughs> just beamed out yeah and again truth you know the truth of it's another weapon and shows up here twice but like really being in truth and not abiding by fear truth love because that is wh- the same thing that's actually a great point is all of this fear battling is to prepare you for the final battle which is the moments where you're dying yeah and fear will try to take that moment from you and that's when you can practice all the tools Mm -hmm. look fear in the face and fucking walk through it like light yeah yeah walk into your walk into your next transition with a smile it's a way to go okay hey okay hey okay hey well i'm gonna finish this with a poem i wrote called why kind of cap this whole idea of life as a video game appreciate everybody for tuning in to this double secret probation podcast <laughs> what movie we should have released it fuck <laughs> what movie was that from double secret probation i have no idea was it like uh Ian. i don't know some kind of comedy uh all right it's called why a kid asked me why he didn't need to say more because in his eyes were alcohol adderall thoughts of suicide i looked at him and he was me playing a different life so i answered him life is the best video game that we'll ever make i mean look around you gotta admit 
The graphics are insane. There are no controllers except for your brain. When your character gets hurt, you actually feel the pain. Not a single level is ever the same. And not only that, you get to have sex in this game. You don't ever have to play alone. We've got 8 billion people in a massive multiplayer online, offline, in line at the grocery store. And that's just the people. There are plants and animals, vegetables and minerals, numerous, precious, delicious. Every game has rules. But no matter what parents, pastors, politicians tell you, there is only one rule. Make the game better for everyone. Every game has obstacles, boss battles. That's what makes a game worth playing. So when something comes up inside, B-side, outside, it's just a chance to level up. The dragons make the heroes, the demons make the angels, pressure makes the diamond, iron sharpens iron, and this, right now, will make you. So you can swallow a barrel or too many pills, hit the reset button. But when you get back home where there is no pain, no struggle, no victory, no gain, you're going to miss this game. So you'll come back again to play another turn inside a new character that will never quite be you. Or maybe by the time you're ready to play again, the world won't be accepting any more plays. Life on Earth, archived by the memory of time like Sega Genesis from 89. Let me give you a cheat code to get you started. Forgive yourself mercifully. Love yourself ruthlessly. Protect the earth fiercely. Treat people identically. Compliment generously. Cultivate community. Dance expressively. Have gratitude daily. Orgasm regularly. Forget your history and live presently. And if things get a little boring, take a few grams of mushrooms and howl at the fucking moon. Ryan Eric, get here with me. Ow! So just go ahead and play, play, play pain, play work, play laugh so hard that tears well up, play fight so hard, knuckles swell up, play artist painting your masterpiece, play hero living your odyssey, or play absolutely nothing at all. However you want to, just play. This is a game you win over a lifetime, not a day. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are the fucking best. Enjoy your fucking hero's journey, whoever you are, and know that we're here in heart, in spirit, in body, in flesh, in every way possible to support you on the path. Much love. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Ryan. Peace.